Hello Year 12, it's Jenny here and today I want to talk to you about writing your personal statement for UCAS. Principles of writing it can also be applied to applying for an apprenticeship or future employment as well. So things to take on board even if you're not thinking of uni. There's four main things that you need to include in your personal statement. The first is what you want to study and why. The second is what are your academic achievements and your main subject areas that this year. The third is how you've developed any further skills and wider skills through things like charity fundraising, volunteering, hobbies, work experience, etc. And the fourth is why you would be a good candidate for not only the course but for higher education and uni as well. It's like writing an essay. Now some of you will be familiar with that, some of you won't. The best piece of advice I ever got told about essay writing that took me through to my UCAS application was tell them what you're going to tell them tell them and tell them what you've told them and I still have that in my head now and it's a really good piece of advice because tell them what you're going to tell them is your introduction tell them is your main part and tell them what you've told them is your conclusion and that really helps students I've found in terms of not knowing how to start it or how to finish it as well they have a great main part but they're not sure how to bookend it so that's something to bear in mind and might help you like it helped me Lots of do's and don'ts for personal statement writing. You only have 4,000 characters or 47 lines, whichever is, is the, the one that will fit. So when you copy your personal statement into the UCAS box at the end when everything's done and you're ready to send it, if it's more than 47 lines, it will cut it off. So you need to be succinct, you need to get to the point, and you need to use those characters and lines um, well in order to get your statement as succinct as it can possibly be. You need to tell the truth within reason. Um, don't say anything that you can't substantiate or back up or give an example of. It's the same advice I give when teaching students how to write their CVs. If you can't give an example, don't say it. And definitely don't lie about things like grades because you will get called out on it. It may be at application stage, it may be interview stage, it may even be when you get there, but you will be found out on it, so please don't lie. You need to start now and get lots and lots of drafts done ready to get to the final draft. Now, a couple of years ago, one of my students that I was mentoring gave me 27 drafts of a personal statement. I agree that is quite extreme, but he did get three A stars and he's now well into his medical degree and he's going to be a heart surgeon one day. So I like to think that's going to come back to help me in the future. But starting early and getting everything down on paper now is going to make it easier. The more you can get out now, I call it splurging, just splurge everything onto the page, yeah? If you can do that now, we can work with you to refine each draft so it gets rid of the waffle and we get right down to those points that you want to make for the university admissions tutors. You need to explain the skills that you've developed, but also you need to put it in the context of how it's going to affect your application. You must, must, must check spelling, punctuation, grammar, and you must proofread. I can normally tell within about three seconds of reading a personal statement whether you've proofread it or not. And if you haven't, why should I read it? I want it to be the best that you can give me at that time. So the best way to proofread, and I still do this now to proofread my work, is to read it out loud to myself. And then I will read it out loud to someone else and I will pick up any further mistakes and then you can correct them as you go along. You need to show enthusiasm and genuine interest in your subject area or course. The word passion is thrown about a lot now and it's actually become a bit cliched and admissions tutors don't like it very much. Um, saying things like, I, I have such a passion for psychology and I've wanted to study psychology since I was three years old. Let's face it, you haven't, so please don't use cliches or things like the word passion genuine interest, how you come to the conclusion that this is a course that you're interested in, what you might want to do after uni with the degree that you've got, what things you might be looking forward to doing at, at uni that you haven't been able to do at A-level. So genuine interest in your subject. Give specific examples and back them up. This is what I call the Jenny So What clause and I know it works because students have told me. 
you need to have my little voice in your head at the end of every sentence saying, so what? So if, for example, you write, I am currently the captain of the football team, if I was reading that as a admissions tutor, I'd say, great, so what? If, however, you say, I am currently the captain of the school football team, which has allowed me to develop very advanced leadership skills to the point where we have brought the team to the Borough Cup or something like that. I'm not sporty, you know that. But you're giving an example and putting it into context and you're showing the universities that you have transferable skills. And obviously, if you're doing that from your academic studies as well, you're going to give further examples of that. So just think about what you're writing and if you get to the end of it and you can hear me going, so what, then you need to expand further. Be yourself. Don't use language that you wouldn't ordinarily use just because you think it sounds impressive. The amount of times I see students, you know, tapping on the thesaurus or looking at the synonyms button and putting in words that are not quite right because they think it's, it's a good alternative. This is your personal statement. Write how you would write because the admissions tutors want to see you coming through. Yeah. Similarly, don't use informal language or slang or abbreviate things. So don't put I'm, put I am. Yeah. You're writing an academic piece of work here. Don't just list the things that you've done. Again, explain how they've shaped you, why they're relevant to your application and the context in which you've come to put them in your personal statement. Don't spend more time talking about your extra or wider curricular activities than you do your academic. Um, but obviously, if you've done things that are related to your academic studies, then talk about those. You might have gone to lectures or listened to podcasts or things like that. Inter interweave those into your academic ex explanation. Please don't start every sentence with I and don't put too many I's throughout it. One of the biggest things I write on feedback for personal statements is you are using too much I. Because again, if you proofread it and you find yourself using I too much, then you need to change some of the sentences around. So it makes the same sense, but you're just not starting with I. Using I throughout it is it's really niggly and it kind of dumbs down what you're writing. Don't repeat yourself. Don't waffle. They're the other things I often put on personal statement feedback. Stop waffling. Get to the point. Be succinct. Stop repeating yourself. Again, you've only got 47 lines. You need to pack it in there as much as you can. Don't use cliches. We've talked about the word passion, you know, and things like that. Um, look at some examples of good personal statements and bad ones and work out what is good and what isn't. Don't use quotations. Some people can use them very effectively. 99% of applicants can't and admissions tutors don't like them. So don't quote someone famous because, again, it's your personal statement. They want to hear from you, not what someone else has said. Please don't show your personal statement to loads of different members of staff and ask them for feedback. You will be given a personal statement tutor or mentor and you will work with that person to get your personal statement to be the best it can. Yeah. Sometimes it might be someone you're not used to working with and if there's any problems, just come and speak to the sixth form team. Yeah. Also, we will never send anything off to you, Cass, without the sixth form team quality assuring it. So that includes your personal statement, your actual application and your reference. So it goes through a lot of quality assessment processes before anything is sent off, so don't worry. But by going to lots of different teachers rather than sticking with your mentor, it kind of undermines what we're doing and the work that we're giving you and the time that we're putting into you. So work with your delegated um, personal statement tutor and you will get to that best possible personal statement. Finally, don't use your university in your personal statement and particularly in your conclusion. Don't forget that all five of the institutions that you're applying for are going to see your personal statement. So if you put, for instance, I am the perfect candidate for higher level education because, that's fine. But if you're putting something like, I am perfect for your university because, that's not fine because it's not going to be one university. It's going to go out to all five of them. So you need to make it slightly more generic in that sense. 
um, but just be aware of the fact that you're writing for five different audiences in that sense although it's all around the same subject don't panic you've got plenty of time we start writing personal statements way before any other schools because we want to get you there quicker you've got lots of time to work with your tutor you've got lots of time to research and if you still don't know what you want to do yet that's absolutely fine we will work with you you can look at Unifrog you can look at Unisat and you can get some help and advice and everything you need but rest assured we will get you to get the best personal statement you possibly can to get you to the uni you want to be at